So this is the Nothing Phone 1, and the reason I was able to get my hands on this was via the beta membership that they had available, or have available, I think until like mid-June or something like that. Basically, you sign up for this beta membership that Nothing has, and they'll send you a Nothing Phone 1 with 8GB of RAM and 120GB of storage. So basically, their base model and the black colorway. And the reason they're doing this is because, as you may know, that Nothing Phone 1 hasn't been officially released to the United States. So they're doing this beta membership where you can try out the phone where they don't guarantee or 100% guarantee that it'll work properly with the major carriers that we have here. So I believe with Verizon, it might not work properly and then AT&T, no 5G, and then with T-Mobile, it might just about work just fine. For me, I have T-Mobile or Mint Mobile and they work, or Mint Mobile runs on T-Mobile networks. So it seems to be working just fine for me, but most of the time I am on Wi-Fi because I work from home. So take that as you will with that, but getting into the experience with unboxing it, I just wanna point out that I appreciate that it's just a little bit different. Usually, you know, you get this rectangular um, box and it's nowadays a very thin box. And this box also relatively thin and flat because there's no charger in the box, but it's different because the way it, you get the phone out of the box is pretty cool. It's like in this little slot that you just take it out and same with thing with the cable, you just take out your little slot uh, or take it out of the slot and you get your paperwork and your cable. It's a pretty, different um, experience but besides that the, everything else is pretty much the same you get your phone and your cable that's all that you get but getting into the phone itself the nothing phone one it's definitely unique but if you look past the glyph interface in my opinion it's a pretty average looking device it does look very similar to an iphone because it's got that flat sides and flat back and flat front display so it ends up looking like a pretty boxy looking device overall i mean the corners are rounded so it's not like a straight edge on the corners but the edges are softened out which i really really appreciate just because it makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold in the hand and the phone itself is also relatively lightweight as well it's a pretty big phone but it's not super heavy which i like and the back glass it does pick up fingerprints but it is a see-through glass so you can see the kind of nice unique design that they have in the internals and obviously so you can see that glyph interface the camera array reminds me of like the s23 series that recently we just released now where the cameras are just sticking out a little bit from the back and i actually fooled a couple of uh friends with this so i told them Yo, check out this phone. Um, first, I was showing off the Glyph interface and I told him, yo, this is the prototype of the next iPhone. And because this looks so similar to an iPhone, they were like, whoa, how'd you get that? Where'd you get that? Like, it, they were actually pretty impressed with it and thought it looked pretty cool. And I was able to trick them into thinking this was a prototype for the next iPhone. But then I broke the news to them and no, this is an Android phone. This is a nothing phone. And they were they were pretty impressed at first. Um, but once I told them it was Android, they, were, they turned away because uh, they're iPhone people. But either way, I think the design is overall really nice. And the materials used here is Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the back and on the front. So it's probably not the best Corning Gorilla Glass you can get out there, but still for $300 or $299, I'm fine with that. And then you have the aluminum frame, which most other devices have as well. For hardware wise, the power button and the volume rocker are on different sides and they're relatively big buttons. Again, similar to the iPhone, if you can compare them and notice that they look relatively similar. Um, but one thing I don't like, and I used to say that I really liked that they had the buttons on opposite sides, but for some reason, I don't know if it's because I'm not using a case, but whenever I prop my phone up, I always accidentally trigger one of those buttons. Either I trigger the volume rocker or I trigger the power button and it's getting annoying. So I don't know if it's because like I said, I don't use a case, or what's going on, or if this, if this phone seems to be a, a little bit more sensitive to when I place it or prop it up, but just want to note that. And then on the bottom, you do have a dual SIM card slot, no micro SD card slot, so it's not expandable in storage. I was hoping nothing, the nothing company or just nothing would um, incorporate or bring back the SD card or the micro SD card into phones, but unfortunately not. But you do have a dual SIM card slot, I believe, because it's an international model or it's just one model and it's usually international, so you can have dual SIM card slots. So this might be a good idea for someone who's looking for like a traveling phone or a uh, dummy, I forget what they call it, a burner phone, so that you can have an extra device for some reason and you can make it an Android device. This could be a good option because you could add two SIM card slots into it. Um, but you also have USB-C and then you have dual firing speakers, which for the most part, I think sound relatively okay or pretty good. They get plenty loud enough and get the job done for listening to music or watching videos and stuff like that. One thing I will note though, is for some reason, some apps or I noticed this specifically for Disney Plus whenever I was watching a movie there, the volume just didn't really 
work for, for some reason. Like for some reason, when I went to 100% volume, it still sounded like it was at 50%. It didn't sound as loud as it did when you're watching like YouTube or listening to music on Spotify for some reason. I don't know if it's the app or if there's something going on there, but either way, just wanted to point that out. Then you have that glyph interface, which works kind of like a notification LED light that they used to have back in the day with phones, but a massive one. So it's a bunch of white LEDs where it'll flash or, you know, uh, display um, a nice little design whenever you get a notification, a call, um, you are charging your phone, when you want to use this as like a field light for when you're filming something. Um, also, when you trigger the Google Assistant, this will turn on as well. So it's a pretty cool feature. You have a lot of uh, different ways you can use it, like I said. Um, so one of the ways that obviously I use it the most is to get notifications. So this can be laying flat on a table and you can see it light up, whether it be a call or a notification and you know that you got a notification because it's lighting up. And I also like the ability to use it as a fill light. I've showed it off a couple of times and they were like, wow, that's pretty cool because you can use this to not blind someone. So if you're filming someone, you won't blind them if you're trying to get, or if you're in a dark environment and you're trying to film someone. So that's a pretty overall neat idea. I like the way that they use the ringtones with the glyph light so that the the sound of the, the ringtone matches the, the, the way that it lights up. It's overall pretty cool. Um, you may think it's a gimmick, but I think it's overall a unique way that you can tell that this is a nothing phone. So if you see these phones out in the wild and you see someone's back of the phone start to light up, you're gonna be like, hey, that's a nothing phone. So yeah, I think it's uh can be gimmicky to some people, but it's overall a very cool and unique idea. When it comes to this display, it is a 6.5 inch OLED 120 Hz 1080p display. So I think it's overall above average for what you're getting here. I think it's a great display for watching content. It's a big display as well. You also have minimum intrusions. So the bezels are kind of thick, but they're even throughout the whole display, which I can appreciate. Then you have a single small cutout for the camera, which again, doesn't get in the way. So overall, this display is fantastic. It's great for watching a ton of content. It gets plenty bright enough. May not be the brightest out there in the market, but it's fine by me. Colors look great because it's OLED. I like a good OLED display. And you also have the option of choosing the Alive option, which is basically allowing you to just make the colors pop a little bit more, make it look alive, or standard, which is a more natural tone to it. Um, and then you also have a under display fingerprint sensor and the camera is used for your biometrics. So under display fingerprint sensor works pretty well. I would say and occasionally you'll get a miss here and there. Same thing with the facial recognition of the camera. If it misses your face, just use your finger. If it misses your finger, use the facial recognition. So I would recommend definitely setting up both so that if one misses, the other one will have its back. But Overall, biometrics, I think, is all pretty good. I do have one complaint, though, is with the positioning of the under display fingerprint sensor. I don't like that it's lower down just because ergonomically or naturally my thumb reaches across and it's more towards the, a little bit higher up. And for some reason, nothing has this little icon that shows when your biometrics are being used. And it, once it's done checking your biometrics, it'll go into this locked or unlocked icon. It looks a lot like a fingerprint sensor icon, so I keep constantly pressing it, thinking it's a fingerprint sensor, on, but it's not. I have to go lower down, so I definitely hope that either they can remove that or change the location of that icon with a software update, or in the next Nothing Phone, um, they make that fingerprint sensor higher up, just so it's a more, in a more natural position. Now, talking about the performance, the Nothing Phone 1 does have a Snapdragon 778G+. Plus with eight gigabytes of RAM. I'm not entirely sure how that stands and it's like market as far as like mid-range or flagship. I'm pretty sure it's around mid-range, but for me, the performance was just as good as any of my other devices, if not the same. <laughs> uh, honestly, this performance on this device was really good. And my usage is very, very basic. A lot of it has to do with a lot of media consumption and I already talked about the display. It's fantastic for watching videos and it's smooth. So 120 Hertz makes the scrolling experience, whether it be on the system OS or even within most apps. Occasionally I'll find it, I come across an app where the refresh rate isn't as clean so it doesn't feel as smooth, but I've come across that on other devices as well. So I think overall performance is really good for my day-to-day -day stuff. The most I think I push it is in the morning when I'm watching a video on YouTube. I'll be going to picture in picture and I'll start checking up my banking apps, my social media apps, um, and any other app. I'll just browse around and um, check up on what happened overnight. Um, and that's the, probably the most I'll push a phone. Sometimes some phones tend to warm up when I'm using doing that stuff. 
Um, this phone sometimes warms up as well, but um, not, not too bad, nothing out of the ordinary. I think it just performs really well overall. Maybe occasionally I'll encounter this lag or some choppiness when I'm leaving an app or scrolling around, but for the most part, I think performance is really good. And when you wanna do a little bit more, occasionally I'll have the chance, but really I don't always have the, ability, the option to play games. Um, but when I do play games or when I have the option to, this phone can handle it as well. Um, but I would recommend in some more intense um, 3D games or stuff like that that use more graphical uh, power from the GPU, I would recommend maybe setting the, the uh, graphic settings in the game a little bit lower and maybe improve the um, uh, frame rate just because I prefer a smoother experience. But um, overall, it does handle games really well. I play games like Subway Surfers, Clash of Clans, um, I try out Minecraft, Apex Legends, and I again, it all runs really well, but uh, sometimes you will encounter a little bit of lag or uh, the frame rate will drop just a little bit. And the phone will warm up after some time. Uh, very quickly, I noticed that after a couple of minutes of just playing a couple of games, um, I did notice the phone tends to just get a little bit warm, but not to the point that it's too hot so that it doesn't feel uncomfortable, but to the point that you do notice it. And then tie it in with the software, it is running Nothing OS 1.5.1, which is a skin over top of Android 13. When you look around, it looks very, very, very similar to a Pixel experience. So a lot of the settings, a lot of the stuff looks very relatively the same, but they add their own little twist to it as well. So for one, you can definitely see that some of the widgets, some of the uh, interfaces, the text has like this digitalized look to it, which I think is uh, nothing's branding to it, kind of making it look like it's uh, their official branding and stuff like that. So um, that's pretty much the main standout thing because you have to look for very specific stuff to see what's different and what's changed. Like for example, with the quick settings, um, the top two is the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Those you can't remove or change or move in location for those tiles. They're always there. And then the way they work, you have to click into the Bluetooth one instead of just uh, tapping it to turn it on and off. You click into it and then you click a switch when you get into it. It's, it's interesting, it does maybe throw you off if you're not used to it or if you're used to a Pixel experience and then you come to this, you'll be like, why is that like that? So there's some few things that are a little bit different and weird, um, but some other good stuff that comes in. So for one, um, at a glance is not forced on you. You don't have to have that available at all times. You can, actually I don't even think it has an option for it. You can turn on a widget for it, but you can minus, you might as well use the Nothing OS version of it, which is, um, looks a little bit cleaner and different in my opinion. Um, but you also have the ability to remove the search bar from the bottom. So I know in Pixels, you can't remove that search bar. I removed it. And I like that when you go into the quick search discovery or the Google discovery, you have a search bar at the top. So that means that you can just scroll over if you wanna search for something and then search for something there. So you can keep your home screen free from that search bar. You can also download a third-party icon pack from the Play Store and just add it straight into the system UI. You can also use the material use stuff on here. So overall, there's a bunch of small different things. I won't go into the deep details of uh, the side-by-side -side comparison unless you really want a video like that. I can do that, but for the most part, it's very similar to a Pixel launcher, but with nothing OS's twist to it. But Overall, I would say the software experience is pretty good. Um, I did come across a decent amount of bugs though. So like every now and then I'll have a glitch with like YouTube picture in picture where the actual little area of the picture in picture would mask out for some reason. So it would go black and just block out and stay stuck for some reason. Um, so small things like that I would come across on the software that I don't know if it's the app or if it's the OS itself. So, but um, overall, I, I'm very pleased with the software experience and I'm not sure what they promise as far as like um, updates and stuff like that. So I'm hoping they're able to stay consistent and update throughout the, uh, the Nothing Phone One's uh, lifetime. So I'm hoping it's not just like a one year thing or something like that, but uh, looking forward to see what they do with that. One thing I really wanna see more improvement on is the multitasking abilities and software stuff. So. I'm used to Samsung's ability to allow me to quickly or easily multitask with any app that I have available so that I can just drag and drop using something like an edge bar and stuff like that. Uh, so multitasking is a really cool thing that I really, or it's something I really use all the time on other devices such as my Samsung devices. So I would love to see that come over to Nothing OS in some kind of a different way. Um, and also the app drawer. I don't know, I'm a sucker to be able to customize my app drawer as well. So if I can create folders in there, that would be great. Um, but otherwise, I'm, I'm pleased with the, the experience I have here on the Nothing OS software.
And then talking about the cameras real quick, I honestly didn't really use the cameras much when my in my time using the phone. In general, I don't really use my cameras as often to like take photos and videos or selfies. Uh, I mainly use my camera when it comes to like Snapchat, just taking a snap or something like that. And unfortunately, this phone isn't optimized for Snapchat, which I'm not surprised. So the quality isn't the greatest. Um, it's definitely okay, but it definitely could be better if it used the actual quality from the camera because the camera quality isn't that bad. I think it's overall pretty good. Again, for the package that you're getting here, it's a solid dual 50 megapixel cameras here. So you get an ultra wide and a wide camera. So for me, I think overall it's a good natural looking shot. So when you take photos on this, it doesn't look too oversaturated or too vivid or um, too dull, um, but it just looks natural to me. It looks like what I'm seeing is what I'm getting here, which I, you know, I can appreciate and like. So you can take that photo and you can probably tweak it if you want to, because it might not be like social media ready because I know like Samsung adds some like their own color and vividness to it. So most of those that are photos uh, do look a little bit better and more colorful but with this with the nothing phone one I, i'm more than happy with this this takes pretty good shots overall in video um it does lack a little bit as far as the capabilities it does have 4k but it's capped out 4k 30 so you can't do 4k 60 um and it's one thing i found is that you in order to be able to zoom out and zoom in or in, in fact be able to use the ultra wide or the wide you have to pick one so when you first start recording if you want to get an ultra wide recording you have to click ultra wide and then you can't zoom in from there it'll always be digital zoom if you're able to and then if you want to use the main wide you have to choose the wide lens and then start recording there and then you can't zoom out to your ultra wide so that's there are some limitations when it comes to video there and on the front has a 12 megapixel selfie which overall in decent lighting it looks good once you get into low light situations it can suffer a little bit starts to lose some detail and look kind of soft um, but overall i'm okay with it it's definitely not the best out there but it's it gets the job done for my liking um in front video it's capped out at 1080p um so again it looks okay it's not like the worst 1080p out there it's still hd or full hd but um 4k is the standard in most devices nowadays um so if you really really want the best quality i wouldn't go for this phone for the cameras but for someone who just wants something to shoot and remember the the day or remember the memory this phone has a good enough camera for those situations in my opinion as far as the battery life you do have a 4500 million power battery and i gotta say this is a great battery life i can easily get a whole day with no problem with probably maybe anywhere from a minimum of like four to six or seven hours of screen on time. If I'm getting like a lot of screen on time, I'll definitely end a day of like 10 or maybe even kill it by the time I have to go to bed. But even then, that's like around 9 or 10 p.m. That's more than good enough for me. I unplug at like 5.30 or 6 in the morning. To get to that time, that's fantastic battery life. And if I'm using it lightly, you're definitely going to be able to get at least a day, if not maybe a day and a half with this phone. So this phone's battery life is fantastic. And it, when it comes to the charging speeds, I think it's capped out at 33 watts. So it takes just about over an hour. So like an hour and like 10 minutes to fully charge. So relatively decent charging speed, pretty average for most devices nowadays. Um, but overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the battery life here. And of course, you do have wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, I believe. Um, you can definitely see that coil here. So if you use wireless charging, I believe it's capped out at 15 watts. Personally, I don't use wireless charging as much anymore. So it's there if you want it though. So as far as if you should go out and get the Nothing Phone 1, if you're in the US and you're thinking about signing up for that beta membership, 100% do it. it. For the price, you're getting a killer phone. But again, remember, it's a beta. So it may not work fully on your network. If you have T-Mobile, I can guarantee, or at least... From my experience, it seems to be working just fine. So you can get like a prepaid service with it. Maybe get Mint Mobile. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in Mint Mobile. But still, uh, get a prepaid network with this device and use it as a backup phone or as a burner phone. Probably wouldn't recommend making this your main phone right away quite yet until it's fully guaranteed that this will work just fine. Um, but still, for $300, this is a fantastic device for that price. Um, so again, good backup phone, good burner phone or something like that could potentially be your main phone as long as it works with your network. Um, but as far as if you're outside of the US, it may be a little bit more than $300 here um, as it is here right now. So if it's like around 500, if it's around 400 or less, I would say definitely a good option. 
um, and I would definitely recommend it. But if it's more than that, I would potentially consider maybe like a Pixel device or even um, like a new OnePlus device if you can get the 11 or even the 10 Pro. That I didn't think that phone was that bad in my opinion. And it definitely stands up or if not, maybe beats this phone out a little bit um, when it comes to some certain aspects. But overall, if you just wanna know if this is a really good device or just if it's a good device, personally, I think it is. So Nothing Phone 1, I think is a good device. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the Nothing Phone 2 brings or what future software updates bring with this Nothing Phone 1. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on this device. And uh, yeah, that's been it. Peace.